Today, I'm going to show you five thumbnail design tips that will help you get more views on your YouTube videos. Let's get started. It's Owen Video. Owen Video! Hey, welcome to the channel. I'm Owen Video. For and YouTube thumbnails are a very important part of a well-balanced YouTube breakfast. In fact, YouTube thumbnails are unique because every single person who watches a video on YouTube first clicks a thumbnail. So a bad thumbnail means you're gonna get less views, but a good thumbnail means you're gonna get more views. Make sense? Good, because the real takeaway is this. When you know what makes a thumbnail bad and when you know what makes a thumbnail good, you can make better thumbnails and get more views. Let's dig into it. The thumbnail you're looking at now was done by Karen Carr, one of my favorite YouTubers. She made the thumbnail herself using Canva and it's not bad, but of the people that actually saw the thumbnail, how many of them actually clicked it? And that, my friends, is a daily double. <laughs> What is click-through rate? Great question. The click-through rate measures how many people saw your video thumbnail versus how many of them actually clicked it and how many minutes of watch time they watched on your channel because of it. Now, the CTR we got on this thumbnail was just far too low. It's embarrassing. I can never show my face here again. But that's when we started to think. If Karen can double her click-through rate on 4.4 thousand impressions, then not only will she double her views, but she'll add 2,220 minutes of watch time to her channel. Yeah, baby. Oh, that's huge. There's literally nothing you could do to increase your views on YouTube right now than make a better thumbnail. And here are five design tips that will help to make your thumbnails better. Tip number one is the background. This is the first layer of your thumbnail and every other picture lies on top of it. Your thumbnail needs to be subtle but simple. You've got to show a sense of depth. Otherwise, it looks like you're fake and in a fake place and that's just totally fake. In Karen's original thumbnail, you can see that the background is plain. It's got no depth. It's just flat. And flat designs are boring. They, they make me think of print shop. And, and you know what? You should never make me think of print shop. Remember those printers with all the little holes in the sides of the paper? It's disgusting. Instead, use a contextual background like an office space or a picture of your studio. Then add a color tone to it and decrease the opacity. So in Karen's case, we swapped out her old background with a new background that featured a picture of real estate. Because that's what she does. And then we added a color overlay to it. Doesn't that look better? Step number two of designing a better thumbnail is the hero shot. And the hero shot should be a picture of a human. Even if your video is about an object, the thumbnail should feature a human using the object. I recommend that the hero space take at least 40% of the thumbnail space. And I'm talking about your face, not your whole body. Get rid of the waist high shots. We need to see your eyes because that's how you create connection with your viewer. Look at these thumbnails here before implementing these design tips. Now look at these thumbnails here that follow this design tip. Notice a difference? It's the size of the hero's face in the shot. Is it still there? So in Karen's case, we took out this waist high pick and instead zoomed in on her face, which felt a little weird at first, but in the end, it gave us a better thumbnail. The next thumbnail design tip is your text. And I see so many of you screwing this up. Your text should be no more than four words, but really try to keep it to three words and never ever restate the title of the video in the text like this, but instead support the title of the text and the takeaway with text that creates intrigue or invokes an emotion like rage or possibly romance. But the biggest mistake that I see YouTubers making is adding too much text like this or the text is too small and hard to read like this one here so in karen's case we added these color boxes before adding the text this gave us like a stage for adding the text later and we wanted these boxes to look really good so we added some outlines a little bit of shadowing some texture to make them look real good and then we added the text on top of that you might even want to play with adding text effects like a stroke or a shadow after adding it to the color box doesn't that just pop out at the screen? And the next thumbnail design tip is clickability. Clickability represents your icons or images that you would add on top of the thumbnail to create context and curiosity. 
The images or icons that you add should be easily recognizable to the industry or interest of the target viewer. Nobody ever does this well, except my friend Anthony Ambries. And you can see by his thumbnails here, he always adds an interesting little icon that grabs your eye and leads the viewer to make a click. In Karen's case, we added a picture of Gary V, but we made him smaller because we wanted to let the viewer know that Karen is still the hero of the video. But Gary's picture is highly recognizable in her industry and will definitely cause her viewers to click. And the fifth and final thumbnail design tip is this, consistency. Consistency means that you use a similar thumbnail design on all of your videos for an extended period of time. When you change your thumbnail design for every video, then your thumbnail gets lost in a sea of thumbnails. But when your thumbnail design is similar in color and style to the other videos on your channel, it creates brand and recognizability so your viewers can pick you out in a sea of crowded thumbnails and watch your videos more. That was done really well. It's very dramatic. So in Karen's case, we turned this great looking thumbnail into a template that we're gonna use on future videos to create visual continuity and recognizability on YouTube. But here's the question, did it work? You put in all this time and effort, literally slaving away for hours trying to create the darn thing, and you might even fall in love with it. Or that thumbnail could stab you in the back. So whether you implement just one design tip or all five on your next thumbnail, you have to check the stats after uploading. Let's take a look at Karen's results. As you can see by the chart that you're looking at now, the gray line represents the performance of an average video on Karen's channel. But this blue line over here that is skyrocketing westward is the performance of her recent video using the thumbnail design that we just showed you. It's going really high. After doing the math, we were able to tell that within minutes, her views on the channel were 800% higher than her normal views. And her click-through rate went from a horrible, pitiful, disgusting number like the one you see here. And we raised it all the way to this really pretty looking number here. Now, I'm gonna share the number one mistake that YouTubers are making in their video and how you can fix it in the first 10 seconds. Click on the video now. I'm Owen and I'll see you there.